Hey guys, Steven here back with another video. And today I'll be walking you through Magic's Vegas Pro 15. It just released. I would have known sooner if Magic's contacted me like they did last year. But I think because I switched to Premiere Pro tutorials that they stopped contacting me. But I'm not 100% sure. I think they're salty. I'm salty, you know, whatever. But I do want to shout out the person on Twitter who actually told me that this program released or else I wouldn't have made this video because I wouldn't have known. Just some background information. I did use Vegas Pro 13 and 14. I edited it on both. I used Vegas 13 a Lot more. I started out editing with Vegas and also shout out to Talency for sending out this, you know, shirt. It's pretty cool. And yeah, I'll just be walking through some of the new changes. If I recommend this to anybody just getting into video editing, if it's worth the investment or to anybody who has recent versions of the software like Pro 13, Pro 14, because it is a big investment. It costs way more than most editors. It's around like 700, 800, $900, which is a big investment. So if you're gonna buy this thing, you obviously wanna know if it's worth it. So let me just get into it. All right, so right now we're in Vegas Pro 15 and the first notable change you can see is kind of the layout and the appearance of this entire editor. I think it's a good look because a lot of people complain how it looked really old fashioned. Premiere Pro, Filmora, Camtasia all adapted to a minimalistic look while Vegas looked like it was made in 1982 or something. But it looks like they kind of updated it, but it still doesn't look as modern as most people would probably want it to be. I think just making it black really made a difference. As you can see here, the tabs are also kind of smaller and the things that took up a lot of space have kind of been reduced in space. Like the preview used to take up a lot of space around it, but it looks like they kind of removed some unneeded space. You know what I mean? So more things could fit on your screen at once. This would obviously make it easier to edit and stuff like that because there would be more space on the timeline, etc., etc. So the first thing that has changed is obviously the color. Like I mentioned, you can actually edit the color. If you go to options here and then go to preferences, go to display, you can change the look to four different kind of colors I guess dark so this would be like black medium I guess grayish light grayish I guess light grayish this time and then white so when you apply it it actually restarts the whole program and then the changes will apply so you have to actually close the window and then it appears the next time you open so let me do that right now so right here it has a white look now I personally like the black one this makes it look old once again Another notable change in the layout appears in the render queue, which is actually really good once again, because the render queue was very, very hard to navigate through and it was ugly as well. So let me just play something on the track and try to render it and show you guys how the queue looks like. So right here, I have a picture of myself and let me just render this part right here. So I'll go to file, render as, and then you can see it will appear right here and it's a lot easier to navigate. Instead of having drop down menus, now they have formats on the left and templates on the right, which makes it a lot easier to navigate. And I think this is a lot more efficient. So if I wanted to select Sony AVC MVC, I can just click and then I can just go to render options and then render it. Or I can customize the template and then you can see this is the basic Vegas layout. It's been like this for a while now. There's also another thing that changed with the rendering. Now you can share it online. This has been a feature in Filmora and Camtasia for a while, but it seems like Vegas Pro has finally adapted. So you can upload to Facebook, Vimeo, and YouTube. I believe this was not a feature before. Could be wrong, but now you can upload to Facebook, Vimeo, and YouTube. So, so here you can see some of the basic things you can do. Title, description, uh, render quality, etc. So you would have to sign in once you press upload. They also did something else here. They added a new button, which is one thing that they advertised on their website. So right here, you can see there's a more button. They call it a hamburger button because it looks like a hamburger. I don't know. And basically there's just more options here. So you can kind of edit the visible button set so you can show what appears when you zoom in on here. So by default, there's event effects. If you've used Vegas Pro for a while now, you've, you've always seen the FX button here and there was no way to change it. Now you can hide all of them. You can maybe do playback rate, etc. Etc. You don't have to only do event effects this time. You can just do maybe event pan and crop, which is that icon right there. And then the other one disappears. The next feature that they have that I kind of like is kind of making it full screen for each one of these tabs. It's not really full screen, but it's actually pretty helpful in some cases. So if you see this window icon, this box icon, you can click on it and it'll take up this entire space. So this works for any of these tabs. So transitions, if you want to make it full or if you don't, it's good if you're focusing on one particular thing. Like if you're focusing only on transitions or video effects or media generators or whatever, or assembling your clips right here. It just makes it a little bit easier. You could obviously just do this, but that would take a lot more time. So now you can just click on here. It's a cool feature, not anything fantastic and amazing, but it is useful in some cases. And you can see the hamburger button appears here and appears in a lot of other places on this editor. It actually helps a lot just because now they don't have to place each one of these icons right here and make it take up a lot of space. Instead, they can put the ones that everyone uses like playing pause, and then they could put everything else under this hamburger icon so it doesn't take up as 
as much space. Beside everything I just mentioned, there's nothing really else special in this version. Vegas Pro 14 basically has everything Vegas Pro 15 has. If you go on their website and see what they're advertising, it's just filler. For example, one of the features featured on the website, this is one of the top features they would say is something called picture in picture mode. So if you go here under video effects and try to find picture in picture mode right here, picture in picture right here, it literally does nothing. You could do this without this plugin. So this is one of the things they advertise because they did not have anything else to put on their website. You can do the same thing with a crop right here. You can just crop in and out. I don't see why it's so important. Like if you match the output aspect right here, you can do the same exact thing. What they did was they added a new video effects and then they advertised that even though you could do it without the video effects. Besides that, I have heard that if you do download the new version of this software, software and you had previous versions and you had, you know, plugins and stuff like that, it will automatically transfer to this version, which is helpful. So you don't have to reinstall those plugins and stuff. But besides that, they also advertised that the rendering's faster because there's new hardware acceleration. I don't personally know if that is true. I did notice that there was a difference between the rendering in Pro 13 and Pro 14. So they may be telling the truth and the rendering may be quicker, but I haven't tested that for myself. I've also heard that the 4K handling is a lot better and that Vegas is compatible with more code and file formats and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, that's basically it. Now comes the question, would I recommend Vegas Pro 15? I would recommend it if you're investing in a program that you're gonna use for a while. But if you're using a previous version of Vegas Pro, I don't see a reason why you would buy this. Vegas Pro 14 and 13 basically have everything this has, except for maybe the color changes in the appearance of the layout. Everything's basically already in 13 and 14. So there's no reason to spend like $300 or however much it is to upgrade when you have everything already. But I'm not naive and I know that most people don't pay for Vegas Pro. I think Vegas Pro is probably the most cracked video editor, maybe alongside Filmora or something like that. And yeah, like everything else is the same. The transitions, media generators, everything's the same. There's no breathtaking feature that they've added. It's usually like that in updates like this, minimal changes that kind of make a big impact. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully it helped you make a decision whether to upgrade, whether to buy, etc, etc. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you did, hit the thumbs up button. My name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.